Hey everyone, I wanted to talk about a topic that I get asked about a lot, and you see a lot of this on social media. And I made a TikTok of this or a reel on my personal Instagram, OCD Recovery Nick, which is linked with OCD Recovery. And I want to talk about my opinions on the law of attraction, where it can be in my, again, my opinion, explained incorrectly surrounding uh, when it comes to OCD and anxiety recovery, and then why visualization, uh, visualization techniques aren't really what we think they are, why they can be important, but why it's not really the whole story. Before I go any further, please subscribe, hit that like button, let me know what you think about this. Remember, we have that direct message with Phil, we can get you in, we work in all time zones, our slots are very filled, but we make room where we can, and we do, uh, we do translator calls, which is great. And then we have those webinars, which are great. You know, sometimes 70 people all over the world. If you haven't been to one, you will love it. Huge questions and answers section. We let people turn their mics on or they talk in the chat, me, Moment, Phil, et cetera, all the other moderators as well when they come and go. So the law of attraction certainly has applicability in many people's lives. If you look at how I live my life, I don't really have a lot of friends. The friends I do have, they're friends. They're going to be negative at times, but they're primarily not very negative. I don't run from negative people. I just balance that. There's almost never a need to cut people out of your life completely. I think that's very, very rare, but it's not a hard set rule. So when you're around certain things, people who are more positive, people are moving in the right direction. I particularly like to be around business owners, people that are very ambitious. I don't need to be around those people. I have friends and family members who aren't as ambitious as I say I would be. There's no difference in that. It's what I like. If they want to play pickleball or something like that from two to four in the afternoon, that, that, that's, that's fine. It's not a better than, you know, arena. But what I tend to see is the people who do do those things where they take a lot of time off and they want to work the four day work weeks. They tend to complain about the things they don't want. So what they actually want goes in the opposite direction of the way they're behaving, uh, behaving, which is the problem. So, but the law of attraction can certainly be used in an OCD and anxiety sense and non mental health sufferers in general in a very wishy-washy way. Because if your behaviors and your beliefs are not following up and aligned with visualization techniques and or believing in the law of attraction, you can certainly be skewed in thinking, I'll give you one example, was at someone's house one time, they had a check on the wall, it's the billion dollars, and they were so confident they were gonna cash that. And when I looked at their behaviors in their life, they complained all the time, they had really bad habits. They came home from work at like four, got in their pajamas. And I said, that's, that's really sad because there's a zero, you know, can't say zero, but a 0.0000001% chance you're ever cashing that check. The other problem is you'll see stories of say a celebrity that said, I had a check in my wallet for $10 million. If you know who I'm talking about, this is Jim Carrey, amazing, terrific actor, certainly struggled with really bad depression as we know, and, you know, manifesting your beliefs and asking the universe. Many people ask the universe for things. Many people write blank checks and they never achieve their goals. Highlighting that reality, I, and of all the things I do working all over the world with all different people and all different cultures and different mindsets, I think Albert Ellis, without a doubt, has the best remedy, as Seneca said, the best remedy for anger is delay, the best remedy for contentment which is skepticism, realism, and optimism. It's not a one, one, three, you know, a third, third, third ratio. I think too much optimism is great until something goes wrong and then you're fucked. I think too much skepticism and realism can lead to pessimism and other problems that you create for yourself. So it's, it's not an optimal mixture. It's every scenario will be handled a little bit differently. Sometimes there needs to be more realism and less optimism. Sometimes there needs to be more, and I would probably add compassion, empathy in there with those three. Sometimes more optimism is needed and not as much skepticism. A lot of times I approach things with skepticism. My natural, my natural brain now, because I'm not natural in the sense of how I think, but my belief systems that set me up to think in a more skeptical and realistic way I'll give you an example, one way I live my life. Uh, tragedies happen every day. Murders, children dying of cancer, my dad died of cancer, me having OCD, 
that's not the primary reason for your depression. The primary reason for your depression is your belief of this shouldn't be happening. So it's faulty, optimistic belief systems based around the world shouldn't be this way. And I did this my whole life. I have the utmost sympathy for people who talk about money, politics, religion. I always talk about those three because people tend to hold those belief systems with extreme rigidity and it creates a lot of problems in their life, especially when they're having debates. Uh, I love myself a good debate, but I think most debates lead nowhere because one or both parties are unwilling to actually listen to the other person. And it's a lot of, I disagree, I disagree, I disagree. How do I know? Because I work with mindsets all day and severe mental health. And I have a very keen insight into how people are speaking from 60, 70, 80 different countries in different cultures, you know, ranging from anywhere from Asia to the Middle East and all over the European Union to all over America in different cultures, very different cultures in Seattle and Portland to the Deep South. I mean, it's just different. So it's important to realize that there's a lot of life has weird ways. I don't believe in karma. I don't believe in any of that. But I think that when you act in a certain way, you more than likely give yourself a better opportunity and a better chance for the law of attraction to be more prominent in your life. I think if you believe in the law of attraction without changing your behaviors, which is that as simple as, oh, we'll use a uh, basic belief. I want to get in shape. I want to do these things. And then your behaviors don't change. I'd like to get in shape, but let me go to the gym four days a week consistently at the same time and just see how things go for five months and then see how it goes. So you're behaving in, in accordance with the way you want to think with the law of attraction. But the way that most people talk about the law of attraction, because you can't teach anyone discipline, it sounds really good when someone is bouncing up and down on stage talking about the law of attraction. There are great benefits and individuals that do this change many people's lives. Well, they give them the tools to change their lives and the individual has to change their lives themselves. But I think that we see, a, as social media does, we see a highlight reel. We don't see the 99% of people, 0.9, who believe in the law of attraction and they visualize things and they, flaw, they fall flat on their fucking face. So, and saying it like that may seem dramatic, but it's extremely important to be realistic and also skeptic about how people are talking about the law of attraction. So, and again, when it comes to OCD and anxiety recovery, you can think positive, you can act in the law of attraction, attractive manner from a behavioral standpoint, but if your underlying beliefs are not changing, you're gonna spin your wheels. How do I know? Because I did this for a long time. So there are many pros to the law of attraction. There are many pros with visualizing what you want. But again, if you're not acting in accordance, in accordance with those particular belief systems, you're not going to get very far. I'll use a very, very, by the way, this is not Tony Robbins' fault or anyone who does this. I'm just going to use him for an example. I've said this for a long time. This goes for everything. It goes for what I do. It just goes for everyone who works in personal development, uh, the psychology field, the coaching field, the mental health field, whether it's exercise, et cetera. If I went to a Tony Robbins seminar and I gathered all 20,000 people, the big one in Florida, could be more than that or less, that go to that eight day seminar and I followed them for a year, I will put my entire life on it. That 95 plus percent are right back to their old habits one year later. That's not Tony Robbins' fault. That's, we don't want to hear the truth and we also don't want to hear the reality of, I could do that seminar in five minutes. It wouldn't sell very well, but, and it, I wouldn't do it like this myself, but I would basically go up there with my Hertz Donuts brass knuckles coffee cup. I would sit 20,000 people down and I would say, most of you will never change because change is very difficult. You don't need to read books on discipline and habits because that just takes action day in, day out. A lot of it's very boring. You will question everything about your progress, why you're doing things. You'll want to quit. I can't teach you how to be disciplined. Motivation is primarily bullshit. It feels great, but and it can push you in certain ways, but it's not that important. Inspiration lasts very short. 
Most people will never find true passion because I don't really believe in true passion. I think you become passion, passionate by finding what you like and then realizing that the, the pros are worth it more than the cons. And most of you will fail much more than you succeed. Thank you for paying me for my seminar and uh, we'll see you next year. That wouldn't sell and I would get numerous bad reviews, but I think the message in what I just said is a thousand times better, again, because it's what I believe and I would have many people tell me I'm wrong, which is fine, than any seminar you'd ever go to where people are telling you about emotions and jumping up and down. That is really hard to accept. It's not impossible, but, it, but it's hard. I would say my discipline's great, but I have doubts, I'm a human. There's times where I didn't want to you know, make this video, whatever it is, 5.30 at night on a Saturday after working all day and going to a baby shower that I didn't really want to go to, but it was fun when I got there because that's what happens a lot of times. I don't want to do things and you go, and, you know, screw it, I'm going to go and then you have a good time. So, but it's not what we think. Most people achieve not much. That's not because they can't. It's because achieving things is really hard in today's day and age. Highly competitive, AI is growing, a thousand things pulling you in different directions, very easy to be distracted. Also, and again, not that social media is bad, not that instant gratification is bad, but we live in a different time. It's not as simple as it was in the 50s and 60s. And there's always problems with every time period and every generation. So this could be a sad video for some people. I think that this is a very important topic. By the way, I'm not depressed at all thinking about this. You know, people say that's a very morbid view. Depends on how you see it. I believe when you die, there's nothing. There'll be no memory of this video for me at all. I believe it's a loss of consciousness. I'm no longer conscious. I don't believe in karma. I don't believe in, in attraction primarily, unless you're behaving in a way. And then there's a lot more luck and timing in many ways. I, I, I walk, the, the, I walk, try to walk life as close as I can to the reality. There is no such thing as everyone is good looking. Many people are not good looking. I'm not tall. I don't have the best genetics. I wasn't, I'm not great at certain things. I have to have a sticky note on my desk that says delay strong emotions because even though where I am today, I can be more weird to act like that. I understand that. Just like an alcoholic would more than likely want to be more aware that, hey, I really can't balance this even if all my friends can. So reality, skepticism, but also being optimistic. Even though I don't put all the merit into the law of attraction and visualizing techniques, doesn't mean you can't be optimistic about them if you're behaving in accordance with those bully systems. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this. I am very actually, I'm very excited to see what people think about this. And I'm always up for a good discussion. I, I, I think discussions are more than likely one of my favorite things. I also like to talk, if you haven't realized, because <laughs> I do lots of videos. So, but I try my best to be open-minded to every single point of view. I mean, I work, I mean, take a, Right? Believe in atheistic principles. You can't be an atheist. You, can, you can't be one thing. So I believe in atheistic principles. That could change in the future too. I might become religious one day. I doubt it, but I could. But I work all over the place and people know that. I'm so fucking New Jersey. All, all over the place. Still comes out. You know, like I said, I work with Catholicism, Christianity, the Muslim culture, um, spirituality, uh, Buddhists. I mean, I mean, everything. Stoic uh, philosophies that believe in multiple different gods potentially. And we have great conversations and we don't, we come to a great discussion in many ways whilst focusing on what matters is changing beliefs and getting people better. So thank you again. Look for the direct message for Phil. Let me know what you think. Hope to hear from you soon. Uh, it's kind of creepy sometimes to think about how much I've changed over the years. If I go back and watch some of my old videos, I think, whoa, I would never act that way now. So it's interesting. Have a good one, everyone.